All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make quick mold shells in mostly free software. So this is not free software. Well, it has a free version. This is ZBrush. I have the full version, but anywho, this is a sculpt I did. It's not quite done yet, but we're gonna use this for now. So it has a million polys, which is really excessive and I don't wanna deal with that nonsense. So what I'm gonna do, and this is what I do with all my toys, I go into my uh, decimation master and I'm gonna go ahead and pre-process this with a million polys. It probably shouldn't take that long, probably 10 seconds. I'm kind of stalling with the talking now. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go in, back in, cool, yay. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pre-process that, maybe to see what the default 200 whatever, 20% does. That's kind of cool. Honestly, I'll probably take that a little bit less dense, but anywho, so let's assume that we start with a base mesh. And this is what we have. This is where I usually start to make the mold shell. So if this is my final thing that I would be putting on my printer, I'm going to use a mold shell to go with that. So of course I could decimate this again to get an even lower poly version, uh, but instead I'm going to use mesh mixer because that's free and I assume that not everybody has ZBrush. Uh, okay, so we can take this base mesh and we can reduce this even further because I frankly do not care about this uh, in terms of fidelity in this mold shell. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press W, I'm gonna look at my wireframe, I'm going to do control A to select all of the things and can, sorry, shift R uh, to reduce the mesh. Now, ZBrush, if you have it, is way faster at this. Mess Mixer does a pretty good job, but it takes freaking forever. So, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to just sort of randomly accept that. I found that a lot of times it is faster if you just need 50% decimation to actually just hit 50% decimation and kind of call it a day. And then basically, keep doing that until you have a level that is lower fidelity than you want, and then you can mess with the slider, because it basically processes everything every single time you change the slider, and it's really freaking annoying to deal with. So, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna accept that, and we're just gonna keep doing this, and this is a mold shell, so we really don't need a lot of topology, but you can see that even with uh, 12,000 tries, this is still holding the shape pretty well, and the mess mixer does do a pretty good job at calculating this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep doing shift R, repeatedly and aggressively, like a crazy person. This, honestly, is probably all I need. So once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and export that to somewhere on my computer, which I will do. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and export this. I picked a random place on my computer, and then I'm gonna pop into Maya. You can use Blender, you can use pretty much anything for this. It frankly really doesn't matter all that much. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and grab that file that we just did. In this case, mine was called Mold Shell. Um, I'm also going to grab my base mesh just so you can see the comparison between those. Um, I do have my poly count turned on if you're in Maya, that is going to be under win display, it's going to be under display, hands up display and poly count. And just for fun, I also downloaded the bonus tools, this is a separate plugin, if you google it it's very easy to find. Uh, you can also display the poly volume in here, uh, which is some bizarre, if you move this decimal three points to the left, you have the milliliters. So apparently this is 542 milliliters worth of silicone. So anyway, we have the original mesh and we have this base mesh here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just extrude that entire thing. I use the hotkey control E for this. Uh, then I'm going to give it, oh God. Uh, so if thickness explodes for you, as this does for me, you can use local translate Z. It does mostly the same stuff. Uh, so what we're gonna do is this is gonna be your thickness. Uh, this number here is dependent on the units in Maya. I am currently working in millimeters. So if I wanted this to be 10 millimeters thick, I would set this number to 10. Um, you can double check your units under Windows Settings and Preferences Plugin Manager. Oop. Uh, I'm sorry. No, wrong one. Uh, Windows Settings and Preferences Preferences, Force of Habit. Uh, and then I believe somewhere in the... where is it? Good God. Settings. Yes, good. Uh, you can change your working units there. Um, I would like to note that mine does say centimeter, but it functions as millimeter. And for some reason, when I put it as millimeter, it functions as centimeter. So yours might vary. Um, I would suggest, you know, make a one centimeter cube and export it into something like Cure or a Slicer, and if it comes out as a millimeter, then you are working in millimeters functionally, and that's how I figured out mine was being insane. So anywho, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, cool, maybe I do in fact want this, uh, you know, 10 millimeters thick. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to stop doing that. Um, we're going to show our original model, and if we go into 4 uh, or the wireframe mode, you will see that we have basically a nice, perfectly encapsulated shell here. Uh, there are, however, some mesh errors in this that do need to get cleaned up. Uh, so for one, if we double click on this outer shell, and if you right click and do face, coalesce mode, face select mode, words, 
Uh, if we right click there and you double click on this outer shell, you'll notice there's a whole inner shelf inner shell still there. Press shift, marquee select over your entire model, it will invert the selection, press delete, and now you do not have that, which is good because you don't want that to begin with, it's stupid. Um, okay, there are some other mesh errors in here. We will notice if we pop into the model itself that there are some random extruded faces kind of doing some weird bullshit in here. You don't want that, so grab that, go ahead, and do file export selection. I'm gonna save this somewhere on my computer again. All right, I have saved this somewhere on my computer again. We're gonna pop back into Mesh Mixer and we're gonna go ahead and just delete that mesh. And then I'm going to take the mesh that I just made, which was called something in a place. Yes, I have found it because I have apparently used this folder enough. Okay, so now we have this back in Mesh Mixer. What we're going to do is an edit and we're gonna make solid on this. And you don't need to do anything terribly fancy for this. Um, basically what this is gonna do if we look at our shaders and we drag on somewhere, somewhere in here, there's a wireframe shader for this. I, oh, right, I have to click accept first. That would be helpful. Uh, so if we go in and we look at what I think is a wireframe shader, uh, you will see that there is no more geometry clipping on the inside. If you are so inclined, you could leave it here. Or, I don't like working with high poly stuff, we're app cool. So I'm going to do control A and shift R to reduce this again. And then I'm going to reduce this again. And then I'm going to export it like a normal person as one does. Uh, so you can see I'm sort of saving iterative versions of this here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to, once that saves, take this back into Maya. I do recommend if you're in Mesh Mixer, do not save to an external drive. It tends to take for fucking ever. That's what I'm doing now. It had I been exporting this directly to my desktop, it probably would have taken like a second. Okay, we're going to pop back into Maya. I'm going to delete this monstrosity because I no longer need it. I'm going to grab my Mold Shell 3. I'm going to put it back in here. I'm going to Control 1 to get out of Isolate Select Mode. And if we look at the original mesh again, you can see that that is still pretty gosh darn high resolution there. It's done a nice job of sort of dealing with whatever uh, weird overhangs and nonsense is there. And now we just need to figure out how we're actually going to cut this. So for this particular model, I think that it would probably be reasonable to cut, uh, basically if we're going to make this into pieces, we need to actually cut the thing in half. So what I'm going to do is just sort of make a plane. I could have made a cube, but if I make a plane, I know it starts directly on the origin, so that's kind of what I'm doing. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to make a plane, I'm going to duplicate this. Press and hold D and V to access vertex snapping. Move the pivot all the way over here. Press and hold V, and I'm going to select both of these cubes and do Control 1 to isolate select. We no longer see the, the thing in there. And I'm just going to press and hold V again to snap that directly onto the vertices there. Um, so I would like to also say I'm doing this very fast, uh, mostly just hopefully demonstrating the principles here. If you're familiar with Meyer, this might make a little bit more sense. I'm going to grab this mesh. I'm going to control H to hide that because I don't want to mess with the original version. Duplicate a version of this mold shell and grab one of those mold shells and one of these sides. Do a mesh boolean intersection and a, grab the other shell and do a mesh boolean intersection. And now we have this piece cut into two. The downside of this is that it is a giant n-gon in the center and n-gons are always crap. So, grab that, murder it aggressively, select the entire mesh, extrude, and this is going to be your wall thickness. So in this case, I usually print a two-layer thick mold shell with a 0.6mm nozzle. I have found that 1.4mm thick works very well for me, so I'm going to extrude that to 1.4mm thick. And now we have a delightfully extruded mold shell wall thing. So, I'm going to do that to the other version. If you missed it the first time, grab this face, delete it, select this entire thing, and control extrude. 1.4 millimeter wall thickness, and we have that, and that is good to go. Uh, now, what probably would have made a little bit more sense, you will actually notice over here that there is some bullshit going along with the edge. And I think what I'm going to do is actually redo this in a slightly better way. So, what I'm going to do is put Mold Shell 3 back in here. I'm going to extrude this to begin with to 1.4 millimeters thick, uh, and that pretty much will save me some editing later. Uh, and then I'm going to basically do the exact same thing again where I draw my delightful little plane here. In this case, I'm just going to duplicate that plane, and this will save me a little bit of work as well. I don't know why I did it in a very convoluted way before, but here we are. So I'm going to shift select and just grab that one little plane here again, extrude in the other direction. And in this case, I have extruded and the object is inside out. Go to mesh display and reverse. And once again, duplicate your mold shell, grab one of these halves, mesh, boolean, intersection. You could do difference or union or whatever. I just like intersection. I find them easy to deal with. All right, so let's see what this gives us. Basically, what I did before, but with half the steps, and we get a perfectly straight line down the origin, which is going to make printing and fitting everything together a little bit easier. So, yay, good stuff there. Okay, uh, now what we can do is, if we want to, uh, I could probably, actually, you know what, let me do this a third time, because I need somewhere to pour my silicone in. Yay! Okay, 
What I'm going to do for this is something very, very ugly, but that's okay. Nothing needs to be pretty if it's just a mold shell. Okay, that's really tall. I'm going to go ahead and scale that down. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to scale it and do some more nonsense to it. And cool. All right, I am going to mesh Boolean, union that into my original piece. Then I'm going to do uh, a mesh cleanup on this, just because N-Gons suck. Uh, okay, uh, I don't know why I just duplicated that. That was a weird decision. Okay, select this again. Extrude this again. Again, I like 1.4 millimeter thick walls. All right, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing that we've done three times before, because I'm super spacey right now. Yes, it's going to be great. Oh, God, I don't know what button I just pressed. Crap. Oh. I, like, legitimately don't know what I just did or where all my tools are. This is gonna get really weird really fast, guys. It's gonna be great. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so clearly I have two planes here. Like I said, I'm gonna extrude one. I'm going to select the other plane and extrude that other plane. Once again, we mesh display reverse this and duplicate this mold shelly thing. And then we go again to mesh boolean intersection. And again to mesh boolean intersection. Thank God, it's done. Again, okay. So now we have a delightful, weird-looking thing up here that we can, you know, mess with later and have boring spouts and all of that stuff. Okay, so once you've done this, what I'm going to do is delete the history on this object. Uh, I use the hotkeys Alt, Shift, and D to do that. Alternately, go up to Edit, Delete by Type History. It just helps Maya to not explode sometimes, if you're lucky. The next thing I'm going to do, I need some tools for that, and I genuinely don't know where they've gone. This is awkward. Modeling standard. Okay, cool. Don't know what just happened. Don't know how I switched that accidentally, but here we are. Hotkeys. Okay, what I'm going to do is click on this mesh. Go ahead and make that mesh a live surface model. And then I am going to go under mesh tools and create polygon. And with the live surface modeling, I can basically doodle a bunch of weird bullshit on my model, and it is going to stick to where that model is, kind of contoured to the model. Uh, this only reason that this is really helpful is that it is going... Actually, I don't know which mesh. I just made the live mesh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And once again, do create polygon. And then all I'm going to do is just sort of trace up this edge and go along the entire model. Uh, you do not need this to be particularly high resolution as long as it's not clipping onto the inside of the piece or sticking really far on the outside. Basically, I'm just making some kind of little flange that if you want to clip this together, you could... Um, you know, I honestly would usually just kind of leave this as it is and then hot glue the pieces together. Flange probably makes more sense if you plan on uh, reusing this multiple times. All right, I'm just going to skip across here, kind of go around the other edge, not paying particular attention to this being pretty. You will see at some point, uh, once you get the shape to a not super messed up point, you will end up with just a giant hellish end gun, and that's fine because we're going to fix that later. Um... All right, N-Gons always suck, but as long as they're gone by the end, who really cares? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this monstrosity thingy that we've just created, extrude that, and I am just going to... Okay, before you start scaling stuff, turn off the live surface modeling so it doesn't stick to your model, and then you can basically uh, squish this out to the sides. At which point, uh, if you so choose... Well, no, you should always get rid of that weird thing in the middle. Uh, and then what you can do is come through and grab all of the vertices, faces, edges, whatever on this outer edge thing, crush them flat, come through and do the same thing over here, and just scale them flat. And now you have a delightful, more or less perfect representation of your entire piece. Um, there are some bizarre mesh errors happening over here from clipping geometry. I'm going to kind of shamelessly ignore them for now, not gonna lie. Um, so I'm not doing this for realsies. Um, this just involves a little bit of more mesh cleanup and some extra edge loops to kind of fix some of that. Um, you could theoretically also just drag these up really high until it wasn't clipping, and it doesn't really matter what the side is doing, so you can also just sort of grab these vertices, merge them to center, that'll actually fix all of the issues, not really cause any issues later. It just looks stupid. Uh, and that's fine, because again, this is a functional piece. It doesn't need to look pretty, and the topology just needs to kind of get you where you need to go. Alright, so I'm going to grab this, I'm going to duplicate this, and I usually save a backup of this so I don't need to redo it 8,000 times. I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. Make that 1.4 millimeters thick, grab the other duplicated version of that, and make this one negative 1.4 millimeters thick. That basically just scales it in the other direction. Again, we go to Mesh Display Reverse, and then what I can do is select these two mold shells over here, and I can do a Mesh Boolean Union. 
on these two delightful loops. And now we have some kind of weird looking little mole shell over here. And if you want, again, well, you should do this eventually, but do this on the other side of this as well. Um, at this point, if we did not want this ginormous spout on top, if we cared enough, which apparently I do because I'm demoing this, so we, uh, what we can do is just come off with a really quick boolean here and grab the mesh, grab this object here, question mark. Ah, yes. Wait, what? Weird. Okay, apparently it missed half of these sides, which is kind of unusual. Okay, we're going to ignore the fact that it has a mesh error for now. Oh, no, it was selecting the wrong object. Okay, anyway. So we're going to grab the, the object itself and grab grab the object itself. Shift select the object on top. Do a mesh boolean difference. And that will basically just trim off the top of that object. So we now have a nice thing there. Uh, you can do the same thing for the base. Or actually, let me just demo this on... I'll just demo this on the one side of the object that I know to be off not broken. Uh, so if you wanted, again, a flat base, just do the same thing. Uh, boolean the bottom of that object off. There's a bunch of other ways you could uh, cut stuff. You can also do plain cuts and mesh mixer. This is usually just how I do stuff because I'm comfortable in Maya. And then again, you can add on whatever base you are personally comfortable with using. Hopefully that was helpful. That was not supposed to take 16 minutes, but here we are 16 minutes later. If you got to the end, I hope you enjoyed the sound of my voice because I certainly didn't. Have a great day and good luck modeling.